Hey, this is Malika of Evanston Live TV, and I have with me Rose Cannon. Many of you are, are really starting to hear about her, uh, what would you call it, Rose, uh, online gallery? It's an, it's an online gallery. gallery. I would love it at one point in uh, in the future to have a, a brick and mortar but right now it's strictly online and doing and doing pop-ups and temporary shows around town yes yes mm -hmm. canon fine art <laughs> yes more 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 about canon fine art yes so you represent artists that is such a cool job <laughs> i mean like how do you I know, I know. I waited until these senior years to finally have a job that I love. And, uh, and, and but to come along in this pandemic time has been a little stressful. And I, I just got an email today from one of my old colleagues from my last job and asked me, are you having luck in this new business? And I haven't, I haven't answered her back yet. But uh, um, actually, I mean, you've been doing very well. I mean, your your name has gotten out there. Um, yes, yes. To, to tell you, to, just to tell you a little aside, like last night, I started working on my own private version of my Zoom. So I invited my grandsons as a test. And so uh, the oldest one, actually both of them know how to do sh a screen share and all that stuff. And so they Googled my name and they said, oh, granny, my God, look at your name is out there, Canon Fine Art Gallery. And they were just, they were astounded. And I knew there was some stuff out there, but I didn't know how much and stuff, but it's uh, how many different things have been posted and are now coming up on Google. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your, your, your name is out there and you're representing some awesome, awesome talent. <laughs> I mean, well, one, one, my mom, Fran Joy. Right, I know you're partial <laughs> to that. Everyone in Evanston knows knows Fran Joy. Well, alone in North Shore, Chicago, know about Fran Joy. Um, well, I I want to give I you know I want to give her her props here. Uh, she was the one that I reached out to when I wanted to do this business, and I knew she had you know, a lot of ties into the artistic community here in Evanston. And she sort of started me on my way. And, and uh, I, you know, she's still, she's still around. She's still in my, she's, I'm still representing her in my gallery. And she's, I consider her my collaborator, business partner, though she's kind of a little bit resistant to that. But uh but yes, that's that that's the way I view her as my business partner and my collaborator. And she and she helped me get on my way. She she pointed me to my first artist. Well, she was my first artist that I bought uh under my gallery <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, you you've um the two of you you've been cur curating shows and, and just really getting out um, there. So, you know. Fran Joy is, is definitely one of the artists um, that uh, you've been featuring in, in the shows, representing. Sure. And, and, um, this artist, okay, your background is? Uh, that's Michelle, Michelle Delgado. Um, he is my visionary artist and he does, uh, just most of it is abstract, visionary he calls himself and uh, I just fell in love with his work. Well, after, well, actually, uh, William Quaminipo insisted, William came in and visited uh, the Evanston Arts Center uh, as Fran and I were preparing for a show. And of course he came in very uh, professionally. He brought all of his, his books, his portfolio, so that the curator at Evanston Art Center could see, because Plan and I, uh, Fran and I were planning a show at that time. And so William said, um, I told him that I was really kind of a fan of, of Basquiat. And he looked at me and he said, oh God, you have to, you have to go meet Michelle. 
And I, I said, oh, well, but he's downtown. He's at Joby. I don't know if we're going to go down there and stuff. He said, no, no, I insist you have to go this weekend. So Fran and I loaded ourselves up in the car and we went down there. And I was just amazed at, at the art that I saw in, in Michelle's studio and uh, just sort of it, it evokes in you a, a personal experience when you stand and look at it. And we stood and looked at it for, it seemed like at least an hour or so. And uh, that's when I became a big fan of his and wanted to, uh, uh, then he came out here because we were gonna have him in our show. And the background behind me is what we hung in our Evanston Art Center show uh, of his. And uh, there were like maybe three or four more that are not in are not in the background, uh, but he was very um, generous in loaning us some of his pieces because these are not, you know, they're kind of like high priced and stuff. And he's uh, he's he's internationally known and he's known across the United States too. And I don't know if that answered your question or not, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then you had mentioned um, William Quamenapo. Quamenapo. I remember and, uh, my mom uh, meeting him years back with Special Things Art Gallery, ran by Michael Phillips off of. Uh, I, it was it was right. It was along Greenleaf. Yeah, Greenleaf, not too far from the eleven hundred gallery over there. It was it was it was along that little strip and stop. I, I, love I grew up. I grew up with. I grew up with Michael Phillips here, in okay. Evanston. So I, I, you know, actually, I grew up with Fran's uh, deceased husband too, Al Joy. And um, actually, William Quaminipo was uh, the manager of that. I think it was Special Things Gallery, is what it was called, or Special I forget the exact. It was called Special Things. Right. He was the manager of the gallery with Michael Phillips. Quamenipo was. And it wasn't until later uh, that your mom came in. At least this is the story she tells me. Um, I wasn't hanging around art, art galleries at that time. And that was like back in the, what, the 80s, maybe, or whatever. I was busy, you know, working in federal government, raising babies. And... Um, didn't didn't know a thing about Michael Phillips gallery except Michael was uh you know I went to school with him I grew up with him actually uh William's work is um would he his stuff is is phenomenal too he's, he's like yes it, it it actually is and I I really Fran knew him like I guess Fran transitioned in when he was beginning to leave out of the gallery or 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 move on to 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 other things, and Quaminipo was living on the north side at that time in in Rogers Park, and he had uh, connections all through the city. But I I think he was traveling a lot for his art shows, and at that point he began traveling south, and that's when he found his his now current home of Savannah. He's, he lives in Savannah, Georgia. Okay, so, I mean, you have some superstars that, that you're representing. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and actually, uh, Fran insisted that I buy Quaminipo after I bought hers first. And then I bought a, a few other people around here. Um, uh, I'll pull their names out of my, my head. I've, uh, I've, I've got some of their stuff. But anyway, she insisted that I, I I look at William's things and buy them. And William operates specifically selling uh, prints, his prints. But his prints are the highest quality G clay prints. And uh, people have gone up to them and asked me, "Is that is that a photo?" Uh, and it, some of his stuff is so beautiful, it looks like photography. But no, it's all watercolor. Um, and I forget. Uh, the the style he uses but it's just beautiful and Fran was able to give me a little background about him she told me she said I knew William 
when he painted differently than what he does at this moment. And she said, I've been able to witness his transformation or his development over the years. So it's been about what, from the eighties? God, how many years has come? <laughs> I, I don't even want to count, 40 years? But she, but, but what he's doing now is, is just exceptional also. So, so Rose, so you came from working for the government. Yeah. And so you had this artistic spirit burning in you. I, I could only imagine like your soul was like, your spirit was like dying, sitting behind a desk working for the government. <laughs> and you had this, this person who wanted to get out and be with the artists and put beautiful paintings up on the wall for people to see and buy. And Ex exactly. And I was in, uh, you know, I, I was truly what they call a fed. I was devoted 40 years to in that job. It paid the bills. That's it, it. It paid the bills. But there were aspects of it that were very, very exciting and interesting to me. Every time I used to get tired after about three years in a job and it's like, okay, it's time for me to move along and to find something else. And so I, I progressed pretty, pretty far in that job. One of the highest one of the highest levels in that job that I held was a hearings officer. And I thought I was, I was, I had to be trained for it. I was so unqualified when I went in. I thought I would die when I started that job because it was so, so hard. But what it did was it stretched me to the point that now I can walk into to any situation and know how to make people comfortable and also know how to make me comfortable. I, I, you know, I may be stressed and everything before I get there, but when I get there, I know how to relax myself and relax the people. I used to hold a lot of hearings with attorneys and doctors and things like that. And I, um, it just, it just stretched me to the, to the hilt. And I felt like a rubber band. And many times I felt like I would break in that job. But I, but I never did. Um, so so in, a, in a way, that job prepared me for what I'm doing right now, actually. Yeah, because uh, working with artists, I mean, I, I worked in the entertainment industry. <laughs> I know you know about People that. Are, are a, a special breed. <laughs> so. A special breed. You know, I, I, have, I have one over here that's like my little angel. And then I have another one over there on my other side that's the, the devil. And so I have to, it's like, okay, you know, uh, how am I going to work this today? And uh, so uh, um, it, it helps. Um, and I say this seriously, um, my age, my maturity helps too, because I, I, I think I've seen everything in the world just about already. And there's like, there's nothing new under the sun that I haven't seen and stuff. And then I raised a family too, and I, I only had boys. And that was, that was something for, for a woman to do, to raise boys in this culture and stuff. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I used to I used to sit in my job and be bored and want to. My heart was always out there in the performance arts or in the visual arts. Um, uh, I can't even tell you. I did art all the way through college. Uh, I did visual art all the way through college. I did performance art too. Uh, I guess if I had done what I wanted to do, I would be an actress right now. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was, but some part of me, and, and, and as Fran will tell me, it's probably what side of it, maybe my, my Taurus. I have a lot of, I'm Pisces, but I also have a lot of Taurus. Um, the Pisces is my artistic side. The Taurus keeps me grounded. And I have some Scorpio too. So I had plans from when I was five years old to be an actress and um, was, was moving along through grade school and through high school in theater, predominantly theater and, 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 and uh, some art classes too in high school. And then... Um, 
something happened to me where I said, okay, this is fine. Uh, was doing theater in college and really got a big dose of the kookiness, the cuckoo-ness in the theater and the performance world, got a big dose of it. And I said, you know, I got to have a base here. And so I, no, really, because I, I mean, okay, I was invited to, to try out for hair when it was, when it was, when it was uh, performing here in Chicago. And I was like 18 or 19 and I was fat. And I said, oh no, I can never do that. I can never go out there naked. I think, it, I think hair was the one where everybody was naked on stage or maybe not hair. It, it was one of them. And all of my, all of my, uh, my other colleagues in the theater department, they were all going and getting parts on stage naked and I could not I said I can't go I, I can't I know I can't be naked on stage so <laughs> so anyway um it uh uh I've always been attracted to the arts um and always was bored a, a lot in in my in my big job that paid the bills and always wanted to get out and so do something. So what was that like for you? Okay, so was it the 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 naked role that you said, okay, I'm going to get a job tomorrow? <laughs> oh, oh, that's where that's where I was going. I said, no, you know, I can't do this. Um, I, I was in one of the most uh, I would say cutting edge oh. theater. It was the very late 60s and early 70s here in Chicago. And I knew that that the stuff that was going on then would, would have taken me down the wrong road. So I sat and I said, okay, Rose, you have to, so that's, you, you have to change your major. You know, theater is wonderful, but none of my friends were working at that time. And a lot of them, you know, they're still not working. And I'm sure they're even not working, uh, they're even working less now, but I, but I started studying psychology. I wanted to be a psychologist and uh, I studied psych and I, I, I majored, I got a BA in psych from UIC and was invited into the master's program, but was suffering from being a starving poor student. And I said, no, I think I need to make some money before I go into grad school. And I, I came out and then got into federal and federal just, you know, <laughs> and, and it just, it just took me. Mm -hmm. So, oh, wow. And, but I, but I remember, I remember Melba Moore. I don't know if you might be a little bit too young to remember yeah, Melba Moore, right. but she had, she had the same story. I forget she was maybe, she might have been in, in government or she might have been in teaching or education and she wanted to get out and do creative stuff and finally did, finally did step out. Okay, so, so what was it that you, you said, you know what, I'm going back to my spirit, to my root, which is the creative world. And I'm gonna represent artists and make sure they're seen and featured and you know, really that world. So what was it that, that Well, I've told this story before and it's not it, it's not real glamorous. <laughs> it's not real glamorous. But I, and I, maybe after this telling I, I won't tell it anymore. I um I I I retired in 2016 and for about two years I did the you know the coffee clatches and meeting the girls and you know shopping and all that's all the stuff I never had time to do before and I, then I started getting bored and it's like what okay you know you know how much coffee can you drink you know how much gossip can you do and stuff you know and you know sitting around and stuff and I said I'm going to go start taking art art classes again. So I started taking art classes. And, you know, of course, the friends start, well, what are you doing? Why are you going over there taking art and blah, blah, blah. But it was it was beginning, it, it filled my soul. And I took I took art classes uh, with a, a teacher around here for a while. And um, then I said, I want to go and take an entrepreneurial cl a class. And I took an entrepreneurial class with Sunshine Enterprises um, around here in Evanston. 
And, and literally I wasn't there thinking of doing an art gallery. I was there because I have two sons who are professional mechanics and they never had the time or the inclination to go out and take the entrepreneurial class to open their own business. So I told them, oh, well, I'm gonna take the class and I'll get all the specifics or whatever. So I was sitting up in class and they made each of us say what business we wanted to start. And I'm going, I'm sitting up there thinking, uh, I'm not here, I'm here for somebody, something else. And the teacher looked at me and she is now, she is now my mentor and my coach. She said, oh no, this class doesn't operate like that. You can't take a class for somebody else's business or thinking that you're gonna help your sons open their business. She said, no, you sit here and think about what kind of business you wanna do for yourself. And I did. And I sat for about 10 or 15 minutes as she went around to all the other people in the class. And I sat, I sat to my, I said to myself, what is giving me the most pleasure right now? And what has given me the most joy in my life? And it was like visual art. Uh, I was doing art classes, visual art, performance art. And so I said, I'm going to do a gallery. And it, it, it just, it just came out of me right then. And, um, and that's where it started. And that's about, about April or May of 2019 that I decided that I was going to start a gallery. And uh, I went to my art class and told my art teacher that. And he almost threw me out. <laughs> he said, we hate gallerists. What are you talking about? No, 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 get out of here. And he, he was really very cruel to me. And I said, no, I'm going to be a, a, a gallery owner. I want to own a gallery here in, in, in Evanston. And, and he was very awful to me. That's all. And I said, my God, if, if this is the way the artists feel about gallerists, then it, it sort of made me think, two and three times about doing it. Um, so, so how do you choose your, your artists who, who you're going to represent? Well, I look at their work. Um, some of them have been referred to me by other people um, and they'll show me their JPEGs. It has to do, and I, and I was thinking about this question as maybe a possibility of you a asking me this today. How do I decide if I want an artist? And it's, it's, it's strictly a visceral, emotional feeling that I get in, in my heart, in my, in my chest or my, my heart chakra area, as well as the mind and also in the, the solar plexus. It's, it's, it's strictly, an emotional, visceral, spiritual feeling that I get when, when I look at the work. And, and what makes it even, what makes it even, uh, even more interesting is that Fran being my collaborator, we usually feel the same things almost. <laughs> you know, we may not say them to each other and we'll be talking like a three or four days later and the same thing that I might have been feeling when I looked at a piece of artwork, she felt too. And that she is like my, she, she's like the person that I get who can, she, she validates a lot of the emotional stuff that I feel. And, and, and likewise with her too. And um, it, it's, it's, it's an unusual friendship. So right Stop. now um, you have an exhibit um, featuring different artists uh, at Creative Coworking. Yes. That's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's what's the theme to the work at Creative Coworking? Uh, basically, the th theme is that we're bringing artists of color there, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very. Um, I kind of known around town to be an anti-racist and that that's sort of the focus of my gallery is to give artists of color a chance to be shown um, in in all sorts of places uh, and and the, the and the show behind me that you're seeing we brought that to the Evanston Art Center 
uh, also, and, and, and we're called Soul, Soul Works is the name of our group. Um, uh, and we have a number of uh, black artists in that group that exhibit with us. Um, basically, create, creative co-working wanted uh, us to bring uh, a show with artists of color. And, um, and, that's that, and that's what our focus is. And so we're, we're uh, Fran is in the show, Michelle Delgado, William Quaminapo, Javoid Simmons, and uh, David Niari. Oh, you got, like I said, you all got some superstars. I mean, I love all of their work. Of oh, their work. I, I'm just, I, I'm excited about each person's work. Um, uh, like I said, Fran is the one that told me to buy to buy Quaminipo, and I've never been uh, Quaminipo sells all the time, and he's he's certainly different. His aspect is different than uh, Delgado's because he paints differently than Delgado does. But there's something about Quaminipo's work that calms the spirit when you look at it. I mean, you're looking at a lot of uh, a lot of uh, boating scenes, water scenes, and he has, I don't think in this show at Creative, I don't have any of his women, uh, but he has, he paints, William paints beautiful women in beautiful colored dresses and uh, African women with the beautiful garb. That's right, I do have the one, I call her my little girl there in the Creative Coworking and it's called, I forget the name of it right now, but it's a beautiful, uh, it, it's a smaller one that, that, that William, it's a smaller print that William painted and it's a, a, a black African girl with, with the head wrap on it. And it's very colorful to look at. And William's painting sort of calms you down. It calms you down mm -hmm. with the boat scenes and the water scenes. So you all have been, um... Pretty much at all, all the major galleries here in Evanston have been uh, at 1100 Florence. Um, mostly, mostly 11, mostly 1100 Florence, uh, uh, and 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 at the Evanston Art Center. I mean, we did the uh, the winter show last year, and then and then they shut down when the pandemic came, and. They were, and we were planning a show for, let me see if, let me get the dates correct. We were planning a show for, uh, for this year, I think it was like supposed to be April or February, 2020. And then the pandemic was coming in very heavily and they were shut down and they wanted to open back up. Evanston Art Center did and, and literally we were supposed to do our show on the second floor in a, a smaller gallery that sort of, it's out of the way, it's, up, it's upstairs. They called or they wrote us, the curator wrote us a, uh, an email and I was on my way out when I opened it. And they asked us, would we move our show and, 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 sh and bring it to the first floor? And this is what you're looking at behind me, the first floor of the Evanston Art Center. And we were like, oh my God, you know, uh, you know, I called Fran and I said, Fran, I, I can't, I can't respond to this email. Have you seen it? She said, no, I haven't. I said, they're inviting us to hang in the first floor. And she said, oh my God. Well, I don't know if we can do it. I, I said, I don't know, but we have to do this. We have to do this. Yeah, and it was, it, show. and I felt, I felt throughout the curating of that show that God was on our side because every artist, I mean, Michelle, who is not always the easiest to work with. <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure whether he was gonna give us uh, the huge pieces that you see behind, but when he found out it was the first floor of the Evanston Art Center, he said, I'll make a way, <laughs> I'll make a way. <laughs> so you all have uh, artist talk coming up with uh, Javoid Simmons. When is that? Yes, yes. Um, uh, you're going to do that, aren't you? Or? I'll, I'll, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's right. I mean, Fran and I are kind of deciding whether 
who's going to be there that day with him. Um, but I kind of feel Fran, Fran should, he's, he's closer to Fran and stuff. Um, but that's December 5th. Yes. Abs oh, no, no. I, a yeah, absolutely. The December 5th show. Well, that's the, um, is that the, uh, the, the Saturday night, the very, the first Saturday the uh, of, pardon? The artist talk. Right. The artist talk is is what they call the first Saturdays of of the month where all the art galleries have shows and uh, open shows where people can come in. I'm not sure what it's going to be like uh, by then, because, you know, everything is I think it'll be via Zoom. By it might be via Zoom. Yeah. I, I'm sure it will. It, I'm sure it will be it's, via Zoom. Whatever the case, it'll be December 5th at two o'clock. Uh, Boyd Simmons is giving an artist talk. Yes, yes, that's that's what we have planned so far. That's what we're expecting to do. Uh, and I've interviewed with Javoid before uh, for blog talk uh, with curator Alpha Bruton, and and he's he's a fantastic interview. Yeah, fantastic. Great artist, great artist. Mm -hmm. and a great and a great artist too. I mean, he knows he knows his topic back and forth, and he doesn't doesn't stray very much from it. Yes, yes. Well, congrats to you, Rose, on uh, your thank you. career that is clearly blossoming. And um, thank you. It is. And I want to say every time it's been really frustrating during this period of the pandemic. And every time I would sit it down and say, okay, maybe I'm not going to do this business now. This is not the good time. Then something would always come up and, uh, you know, I'd be required to do this or somebody wanted me to deliver or buy some art or do this and it's like uh the higher the, the the higher the universe is calling me to do this business now it, it really is and no matter what i do to set it down and say oh i can't do it it's it's too hard right now um usually the money begins to show up and interest begins to show again yeah well everybody's having to think outside the box these days with their their business if your job is shut down you definitely gotta get creative and figure out a way to to make that side hustle become the hustle and that's and that's what that's what i've been seeing in this business uh so much that the people pivoting from one point to the next okay we can't do it this way so we're going to do it like this over here and and that's that to me is the exciting and creative part about it and and also that our people our, our our black people are now are being recognized and and the profession the, the gallery profession knows that it's time for our folks to be shown and seen and to make money yes yes well thank yeah. you for you know putting a focus on black art and and you know wanting to really showcase and feature uh, the works of black artists out there. They work very, very hard and it's a very tough business. Oh, yeah. it is. It, yes, <laughs> it is. And a lot of them, you know, when I meet them in their later years, you can see the wear and tear on their bodies for having, you know, most of them have lived very close to the edge as, as they've tried to create their art. Yeah. And uh, some of them die and, and, and have not had the successes that they deserve. So... I'd like to do where something can, for the living. <laughs> where can people reach you? Um, I'm at canonfineartgallery.com. Uh, that website is in, in, in the process of also being modified and, and worked up. But you can, see, you can see most of my stuff there. You can reach me by telephone. Uh, and my, my telephone... Uh, I think my telephone link is is in my my website, and I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook uh, as Canon Fine Art Gallery, uh, soon to be Canon Fine Art Gallery on Instagram also. Um, but you can reach me. I don't know if I should give you my number in this, <laughs> my telephone number or not. But uh, well, do you want people to call you or? They can. I, I don't mind. I don't mind if they call me. I'm at 847-791-4886. And leave a message and I will call you back. <laughs> and that's if you have if you if you want to buy something of mine, you're certainly welcome to call. 
And if you want me to represent you, I will certainly look at your JPEGs, your pieces, and, and tell you if, if I might have a place for you in, in my gallery, in my business to represent you. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rose. Thank you for Canon Fine Art. And, you know, we wish you the absolute best. Thank you, Malika. Thank you. I'm glad your spirit is able to live again where it belongs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's taken me a number of years to get here, but it's like, uh, I guess I'm what you call the late bloomer <laughs> and stuff, but, but now I've got, uh, now I've got to, to, to make up for time lost. So, well, so. you know, I, I always say you're on God's time. So he doesn't measure your journey, your life. You're right. As you go by what you needed to go through to get to this point, to be where you are today and- I, I love that old saying, you're exactly where God wants you to be. Exactly, I truly yeah. believe that, I truly believe that. But thank you so much for your contribution thank you. to the Evanston community, Rose, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, this is Malika, Evanston Live TV. That was Rose Cannon. She represents artists. I think that that is such a cool profession, like that's like a dream profession. <laughs> But you all check her out at Canon Fine Art. Stay tuned for more.